you guys, how's it going? Desivai here, and welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. I've been waiting for this game to come out for quite some time now. I've been holding off purchasing X-Plane 11, hoping that Microsoft would, uh, you know, come up with a new flight simulator. I've always, I've always used Microsoft's flight sim, so it's only natural I waited for this one. It's finally out, uh, and I've been having a blast so far. Uh, it looked, the game looks great. And basically what I did off camera is I've been tinkering with my settings, you know, setting up stuff like uh, my controls, binding them to my keyboard and whatnot. Now, the thing is, I don't have access to any uh, yoke for the ailerons and elevator controls. So uh, landing in this game for me has been quite a challenge. Like it's, it's, yeah, it's really difficult to land this aircraft using a keyboard. So I needed to use other features of the aircraft that we are going to be flying today. Uh, it's an Airbus A A320. So in order for me to land properly, I've been making use of the ILS landing feature of the A3 A320 or any, you know, any airlines really has the ILS feature. But yeah, so um, on today's episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to perform a an ILS landing with an Airbus A320. We are currently in Manila international airport or naia and we have the weather conditions set to whatever the real time weather is and we're going to be starting up the plane from cold or from dark and i'm going to be showing you how to do that and you know we're going to do the takeoff roll we're not going to be doing any atc stuff or anything like that we're not going to be getting any clearance this is just you know how to show you know showing you guys how to start up the aircraft the takeoff roll and as well as the ILS landing, so no clearance um, and whatnot. And we may be breaking some rules, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys like you know how to perform, you know, yeah, an ILS landing on our first video. And on future episodes, I'm going to be doing complete flights, uh, so you guys can follow that as well. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Now, the cool thing, the cool new feature about the uh, Flight Simulator 2020 is they have this uh, this checklist for startup. And uh, believe it or not, this is how I learned how to cold start an A320. Um, I've watched several YouTube videos, but this one sort of simplifies it. Uh, I can't justify whether it's accurate, you know, to the real aircraft. But I'm, I think it is. I uh, hope hopefully because I've set everything to realistic so I don't know yeah maybe the procedure is the same so yeah let's get started with this uh, with with starting up the the Airbus so first things first uh, before start uh, before starting engine checklist so batteries we need to make sure they are switched on so you just click the i icon over here and we'll take you to where the batteries are located uh, as of the moment you can see that they are switched off so we're going to go ahead and turn that on and we could tick that one external power on if available again the i button if you don't know where it's located and as you can see we it's switched off so we need to turn that on tick to indicate that it's done engine generators again i so this one's already turned on so we can just tick that and i believe engine bleed air switches are also on but we're gonna make sure yeah they're already on so we could just tick that apu master switch on right here and tick that apu start which is right below here and Take that. Now we have to wait for the avail green icon to pop up before we proceed to the other items in the checklist. Yeah, so while waiting, you guys, I am a real life private pilot for those of you who do not know me on a personal level. And my last flight was basically uh, 2015, both real flight and simulated flight. So I have not touched a simulator, you know, in. Um, about five years now uh, I think we're coming off on the sixth year and I miss flying so much unfortunately um, I'm unable to get my commercial license at this point in time due to due to like you know personal matters but um, hoping to continue that down the line somewhere down the line you know when I fix you know my my personal issues 
I should probably get started on my commercial license. And yeah, I can't wait. I miss I miss flying so much and I'm super pumped about this game. It looks great. It feels great. And yeah. So yeah, just a little bit of a backstory while we wait for this. Now as you can see, the, the light has turned green to a veil. So we can tick that off the list. APU bleed. So we just need to make sure that this is switched on. Tick that one. External power. Uh, we need to make sure that one's off. So right now it's currently on and off. And you should see a little avail light over there. Tick that one. Fuel pumps. Fuel pumps are located here. So we're just going to switch this on. Tick that. Uh, beacon. We are going to switch this one on as well. These are basically the lights. And tick that. And that is our before starting engine checklist complete. Now we actually fire up the engines here. So we'll go through this one by one. So always make sure that your thrust levers are on idle, which they are. Your ignition key must be switched to start. Engine mode selector. So next is your engine master switches. I'm going to make sure these two are turned on. And now we have to wait for the engines to stabilize. So you can hear already that it's ramping up. Now, what I like to do while waiting for, you know, the engines to fire up because it, you know, takes a, takes a bit of time is I, I like to set up my, my autopilot. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right. So uh, before takeoff, I want to make sure that all my frequencies are set to the right, you know, stations. Make sure my altitude has been set for the autopilot as well as my speed uh, for for this short flight. We're actually just going to be doing a circuit uh, circuit around the the airport and making a landing. So we're not going to be going far. We're going to be landing and departing, you know, in the same airport. So for this specific like uh, circuit, I want to be. I mean, I think I'm fine with 5,000 feet of altitude. We're gonna set the speed to about 180 knots. 180 knots for uh, for this circuit, and we're gonna keep it there. I wonder if there's like a faster way to do this. I have not really experimented. Actually, 180 might be too fast. If we have the flaps down, we might overspeed. We'll see. Uh, we'll play it by ear. So now, once we have that set, we have our altitude set, we have our speed set. I want to set my heading. Uh, we are going to be departing from runway 24. So I'm going to start off by setting the heading to 240. And then now we can move on to setting up the ILS frequency. Whoa, why did it disappear? Can we lock you in? There we are. Lock you in. There you go. All right, now let's move on to the ILS frequency. Now we want to move to our navigation radios over here. We're going to hit nav. Come on. Turn green. There you go. An ILS. Uh, so for this one, since all the frequencies are based off real life, the real life airports and systems, we're gonna have to do a Google search on Manila's uh, ILS frequency on the runway. I already have it pulled up. So the ILS frequency for runway 24, which is the runway we're gonna be using for departure and landing, is 109.90. So we're just going to set set the ILS frequency here on the, the standby CRS and then we're going to click this button over here to switch it over to our active frequency once you got that done we're gonna head back to our autopilot panel it was two there we are and we are going to select this button over here turn on ILS display info and that should that should do it for the uh, the pre-flight. Uh, at this stage, I want to be backing uh, backing out 
getting ready to taxi to the runway. Now I'm gonna be using reverse th uh, reverse thrust for this uh, rever for 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 the backup. We're not gonna be requesting like you know pushback or anything like that. Um, never do a reverse thrust, you know, pushback. I am not. I am not definitely not you know telling you guys to go. It's the right way because you don't do that. It's not protocol. And I'm very stupid. We forgot to release the parking brake. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. So yeah, never use reverse thrust. But since we're not doing any, like, you know, contacts and stuff, we're not going to be doing any pushbacks. So I'm going to be using reverse thrust to back us out and get us ready for a uh, taxi. I'm not too sure actually which gate I've selected. All right, here we go. Uh, we want to be heading right, so I'm gonna put a little bit of thrust. To make our way to the apron out here. There we are. And then in just a few minutes, or a few secs, we are going to be setting our stages of flaps. Alright, great. Alright, that's perfect. We could stop here for, for a bit just to make sure that everything has been set. Uh, I'd like to, you know, cross check everything and make sure everything is a-okay. So we have our speed set to about 180. We have our heading at 240, altitude at 5,000 feet. And we can now set our flaps for departure. I just want about two stages of flaps right there. And that should be enough. Okay, uh, like I said, uh, we're not going to be doing any ATC uh, requests, so we're just going to make our way down to the runway and uh, perform our takeoff roll. But right about now, normally, you know, you'd be requesting your taxi clearance and stuff. But uh, we're just going to go straight, we're going to apply a little bit of thrust, and make our way. we're going to make our way to runway 2-4. Yeah, this is the current conditions in Manila at this point in time. Very, it's very foggy. I think it, that's rain. It's, it's drizzling. Hmm, interesting. It looks good, eh? Like, I don't know, from the... Nighttime flying has always been cool to me. I'm always in awe about, you know... With all these runway lights and stuff, and taxi lights. And keep in mind, guys, uh, I'm doing this purely off muscle memory from what I remember back in 2015, where I was, you know, practicing ILS landings with the A320 on a simulator. Um, I may miss a step here or two, but uh, for the most part, um, I've experimented with it, and it seems to be a okay. And you know, we made an almost perfect landing a little bit high on the approach but we'll try to get it right in this uh in this run come on more thrust it's sort of hard to gauge because i'm just using a keyboard for my thrust levers i don't have proper ones yet I'm just sort of gauging where I'm at. Anyway, we're here now lined up at runway 24. We're ready. Uh, we're about ready to make our departure. So I'm going to be rotating at about 150 knots for this flight. It's going to be a sh quick trip anyway. So we're lined up. Let's set takeoff. Stable. Take off set. 
airspeed alive and increasing. 80 knots check. 100 knots check. One fifty, rotate. Positive rate of climb, gear up. One thing I need to praise uh, uh, Microsoft here are the improvements with the overall like sound effects of the aircraft. They sound great. And we have engaged autopilot. Yes, I'd like to keep autopilot on because, uh, like I said, uh, for the time being, I'm going to be doing majority of my flight. It's, you know, with autopilot switched on most of the time because it's very hard to control the aircraft with just a keyboard. And the sensation is actually not really that realistic. So I don't want to get used to that sensation of, you know, controlling this with a keyboard. I'm not too sure if there's a way to adjust that, but I haven't found a way. So I'm just going to assume there's none at the moment. Now we're going to overspeed here. I'm going to cut the power just a bit. We're going to turn on auto throttle, auto throttle, I mean, <clears throat> set the speed to 180. And we're going to bring up our VFR map here, just so we have a good idea on where we are in relation to the airport. So right about now, I'm going to be switching my heading. We'll be turning to 060 to match the runway 06. That is not my heading controls. This is my heading controls right here. So we're going to be turning to 060. We're going to keep the speed at about 180 knots. While continuing to turn the aircraft on our heading. So now that we set we've set the heading to 060, we should be uh, running in parallel with runway 06. So the airport should just be to our left hand side as we fly downwind, and we're going to be flying downwind of runway 24, and then we're going to intercept the localizer and prepare for the ILS landing. Now we're currently at 4,000 or 5,000 feet, around 5,000 feet, 4,900, whatever. And we're going to, we're going to be bleeding out the altitude. We're going to be dropping height. Uh, we're going to be setting it to 3,000 in just a few minutes. There we are. So here we are. And this is the airport right here. So we're in parallel to the runway we, we took off from. As you can see, we could see the runway over here. Yeah, they did a good job with like the overall weather look and stuff. Manila looks a, a lot more accurate than it did in uh, Flight Simulator X. A little bit of stutter there. Um, but that's probably because of my internet. Uh, weather is updating real time. So right about now, we're going to be dropping our altitude. We want to be at around 3,000 feet. So I'm just going to set that there. We can see the ILS frequency already, or the ILS on the uh, artificial horizon over here. It's already popped up. And we're going to push out to about over here. Once we, re once we reach this area, 
Um, we may start our turn, uh, our base turn to intercept the localizer. But yeah, in the meantime, let's check this out. Beautiful. A little bit foggy and cloudy here. We have low clouds here in Manila currently. Nice. I love nighttime flying, man. Like, it's great. Like, I enjoy... I enjoy, like, the rainy, nighttime, foggy, you know, flights. I think when you land the aircraft, it, it just feels so much more, I don't know, satisfying. Okay, we're coming across 3,000 feet here, which is good. And the autopilot should should be able to uh, level out at 3,000. We're keeping our speed at 180 knots. Um, as we turn to base and approach final, we're going to be bleeding our speed to about 150 knots uh, for landing. I did not retract the flaps. We were just going to keep it at 2. And as we approach the airport, you know, we're going to set more stages of flaps. So right now I'm going to be bleeding our speed to about 170 knots to set up for our final approach. Here's the airport we departed from. Here we are right now. Got a bit of patch of clouds in front of us. Now I'm going to be setting another stage, an extra stage of flaps here. Here we go. And then probably drop our speed to about 160. At this point, yeah, auto throttle is still engaged, but as we uh, as we approach short final, I might be disengaging the auto throttle to prepare for our landing. But as of the moment, it's engaged and uh, the plane is flying by autopilot and we're just manipulating, you know, we're manipulating the controls through these uh, buttons over here. Because, yeah, like I said, it's very difficult to um, to fly this thing with a keyboard. It's near impossible. I guess if you had the patience. Um, but even if you did, it's uh, it's really difficult. I've tried it. Okay, now we're going to be dropping our, our altitude. Uh, I want to be setting it at about 2,000 before we make our turn towards base and final. There we go. Set. Autopilot should adjust our altitude now. Come on. Why is our altitude at 1,000? We want it at 2,000. There we are. So you guys can see these little little diamonds here. So essentially, it uh, these are like the glide slope, which is what essentially helps us if we are on flight path or if we're too high from the runway or too low from the runway and whatnot. So if the pink diamond over here is too high, that means uh, we need to increase our altitude. And this correlates to whether we're in the middle of the runway or not. So the center line of the runway. Um, this is fine right here. We want to be setting at our, our altitude at 2000. We're going to be making our turns shortly. Um, it's indicating that I need to increase in uh, in altitude. But we're fine. We're, we're going to keep it like this. And we got a little bit of turbulence going on. I'm going to be making our base turn now. So we're going to be making a left turn into base and we're going to be intercepting the localizer. We're going to be bleeding our speed to about 150 knots as well for our final approach speed.
Again, I'm just manip manipulating everything through the autopilot system. So you guys should be able to follow at home easily. And once we're about here, we're going to select... Once we've established like base and we intercept the localizer, we will turn on our localizer mode on. And as you can see, it actually it went into approach mode, which is good. That means that it's detect it detected the glide scope and it will guide us uh, all the way down to the runway. So right now, I'm going to be dropping my gears, gear down, and then we're going to be setting the final stage of flaps for our arrival. Okay, so gears are down, flaps have already been set. Uh, next thing that we need to do is... Uh, our speed brakes we need to arm make sure the speed brakes is armed so go down here make sure it's armed there you go back to our cockpit so right now the the autopilot is trying to line us up with the runway and as you can see that's the center of the runway over here so we're trying to get that pink uh, that pink bar in the middle and stabilize it there and this is still indicating that we're too low but that's fine again that's gonna come down and once it comes down to about here uh, our aircraft will start to automatically descend uh, towards the runway so we have Speed brakes have been armed, landing gears have already been set, all greens over here. And uh, we have full stages of flaps, so that's our landing checklist complete. And runway should be in front of us as you can see again from the ILS system. You may not be able to see it outside the window right now, but based on the ILS system, uh, we're bang on the middle of the runway. It should be in front of us in just a bit. And the pink diamond is slowly coming down. Again, once it passes the yellow line here, the plane should start descending uh, towards the runway. There you go. There you go. Runway is in front of us. We have visual. And we are now officially on final approach. Speed is set to 150 knots. And our airspeed indicator is also indicating 150 knots. So we are good in the hood. Maybe on like the last second of landing, I'm going to disengage the autopilot just to flare the aircraft out a bit. But one thing's for sure, we need to disengage auto throttle once we reach like somewhere about short final. So we're about 1,200 feet above We're about a thousand feet above ground, so uh, we're about we're about as high as we need to be. We have two whites, two reds over here, indicating we're perfectly leveled. But I feel like we're gonna be coming in a little bit high. But that's fine as long as we make a safe landing. It's beautiful at night. It's beautiful. 500 feet, continuing approach, got a little bit of turbulence coming down, that's fine. Right about 100 feet, I'll disengage your auto throttle, 100. disengaging auto throttle. Flaring. Flaring. 
Reverse is normal. Now we don't have our brake set. So I'm just going to keep reverse thrust until we've, you know, slowed down. We normally disengage reverse thrust at 60, but I'm going to disengage it around 50 knots or so, or 40 knots. Just so we make sure we come to a complete stop because I didn't set my brakes. And right about here we can disengage the reversers. And there we are. We're here. We're back where we started in Manila. And we're just going to get off the runway here. Use reverses to slow us down. I don't have my brakes set. But don't do that. You're not supposed to use reverses to slow you down like that. Make sure you have your brakes set. And we'll just park like, you know, in whatever random gate because we're not really doing any ATC chat. Here we are. I think it's good right here. We can stop the aircraft right about here. That should be fine. Um, all that's left to do is uh, cut the power. Come on. And there you have it back here so that is how you perform an ILS landing in F Microsoft Flight Simulator it's perfect for you guys to do especially if you don't have uh, access to a yoke uh, like I said it's very difficult to you know maneuver the plane with just a keyboard and land the aircraft so this is an alternative option you guys can do gotta gotta improvise right so hope you guys did enjoy <laughs> Hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you guys did, don't forget to leave a like. And if you guys have not already, subscribe and join the colony. Also, follow me on Twitter, social media. Links will be in the description below. Leave some comments, suggestions, feedback. I'll respond to them. And yeah, happy flying, everyone. Once again, take care, and I will catch you in the next video.